During the summer of 1962, four Nike Cajun rockets were launched from Kronogård, a temporary rocket launching site in Lapland in northern Sweden. The main objective of these launchings was the collection of particles from noctilucent clouds. In addition, however, the nose cones were equipped to make a direct measurement of the energy and flux of electrons during an auroral event and also carried emulsion blocks for detection and measurement of galactic radiation and low-energy solar protons. This is the barn at Krotogord that was used as a rocket assembly building. One of the advantages of using Kronogord as a launching site, in addition to its proximity to the Vidsel rocket test range, was the large number of well-preserved buildings located on the property. During the hectic preparatory period, Kronogord was transformed from an abandoned farm to a well-equipped sounding rocket launching site. Here are some views of the payload. The particle sampling cans are located in the nose, Immediately behind them are the emulsion packs, and behind the emulsion packs, the electrostatic analyzer for the electron measurements. The rear section of the payload section was fitted with dive brakes. This section also contains the Sarah transmitter, the parachute, and other recovery aids. In order to receive and record the signals from the nose cone during flight, a mobile telemetry van was located on the Kronogard site. Fine, okay. Kronogard's old but weather-tight farmhouse served as the headquarters building during the operation. In this building was the recovery control center that directed the recovery operation, the rain safety and launch control center, the main operational control center, and last but not least, the meteorological center. Busy space scientists must also relax, and baseball, introduced by the American members of this joint expedition, soon became a popular lunchtime activity. One of the most popular places during the long cold night spent waiting for the proper combination of events which dictated the launch time was this balloon tent. Comfortably heated by the warm air used to inflate it, this tent contained the canteen, equipped with all the necessities, including television. The Nike Cajun is a two-stage, fin-stabilized, solid propellant rocket combination with a short burning time. The first stage Nike is shown here mounted on its special handling carriage, being moved from the rocket assembly building to the launch pad. It is 12 and 1 half feet long, 16 and a half inches in diameter, and contains approximately 770 pounds of solid propellant. The second stage Cajun is nearly nine feet long, six and a half inches in diameter, and contains approximately 120 pounds of propellant. Some other numbers of interest. As used at Kronogard, the payload section weighed 88 pounds and was five and a half feet long. The total takeoff weight was 1,607 pounds, and the peak altitude reach was 65 miles. The second stage Cajun is shown on its way to join the first stage Nike on the launcher.
A rail type launcher is used to provide fast and accurate launch angle settings. At the end of a five-hour countdown, all is in readiness for the launching. Each piece of equipment has been assigned to its respective knot pip, one, two, three, or four. Knot pip is a contraction of the Swedish phrase, not listening mold particular ensemblings project, which translates to noctilucent cloud sampling project. Tio, nio, åtta, sju, sex, fem, fyra, tre, två, ett, None. The nose cone sends information that is recorded in the telemetry van during the entire flight. In order to determine the nose cone's impact point, three ground stations equipped with SARA receivers and sound ranging gear are manned. In addition, a helicopter, also equipped with a SARA receiver, is held in readiness in the air. One of the SARA receivers has made contact with the nose cone and swings around to determine the bearing. The bearings are reported to the recovery control center, where a man plots the impact point on a photo map of the area and directs the helicopter in for the pickup. The impact point was determined with remarkable precision and the helicopter lands at Kronogord after a successful recovery. The recorded data and the sample cans are now turned over to the project scientist who can begin the most time-consuming and difficult part of Kronogard 62, namely the data reduction and analysis.